All right, good afternoon. Uh, the Secretary General is in Germany today where he delivered a um, keynote address to the opening ceremony of the Munich Security Conference. He said that over the past year there had been two qualitative changes that made the global security situation worse. For the first time since the end of the Cold War, we face a nuclear threat. He said it was essential to maintain pressure on the DPRK to create an opportunity for diplomatic engagement on the peaceful denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula within a regional framework and for the U.S. and the DPRK to hold meaningful discussions. The second change relates to the broader Middle East, which he said had turned into a Gordian knot with different interconnected fault lines that have created a quagmire. He warned of the absence of a common vision in the region and said that even if interests are contra contradictory, the threats these conflicts represent would justify some efforts to come together. Turning to cybersecurity, the Secretary General called for a serious discussion about the international legal framework in which cyber wars take place. Concluding his speech, the Secretary General said that governments and others have been unable to manage human mobility. He warned that this had created mistrust and doubts about globalism and multilateralism. This is a reason to unite, he said, He's st and stressing the need to affirm that global problems can only be addressed by global solutions. The Secretary General had also several bilateral meetings on the margin of the conference, including with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, the NATO Secretary General Jan Stoltenberg, the Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko, the Egyptian Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri, and the French Defense Minister Florence uh, Parly, among others. Um, and I have a senior uh, personnel announcement uh, to announce. Today, the Secretary General is announcing his decision to appoint Martin Griffiths of the United Kingdom as his special envoy for Yemen. Mr. Griffiths succeeds Ismail Ul Sheikh Ahmed of Mauritania, to whom the Secretary General is grateful for his commitment and dedication to his service. Mr. Griffiths brings a extensive experience in conflict resolution, negotiation, mediation, and humanitarian affairs. More about uh, Mr. Griffiths in my office. <clears throat> and also on uh, travel, Mark Lowcock, the emergency relief coordinator and head of the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, is scheduled to visit Tokyo, Japan on February 20th. This will be his first mission to the country. disaster risk reduction, emergency response, and a donor to humanitarian action worldwide. He will also meet representatives of Japanese NGOs in the private sector and participate in public seminar on global humanitarian priorities and new policy approaches at UN University in Tokyo. And regarding the Democratic Republic of the Congo, our colleagues at the World Food Program said today it is they are energizing two key elements of it, their emergency response operation to prevent famine in the war-ravaged Kasai area, cash distribution to meet the most vulnerable people, and specialist support to check acute malnutrition in women and young children. Since the launch last week, the cash initiative, 38,000 people have received the equivalent of $15 each uh, for a month, enough to meet their basic food needs. The intention is to more than double that reach in the coming weeks. Recent airlifts from France have also enabled a significant scale-up of WFP's nutrition intervention in Kasai, 56,000 malnourished children treated in January, up from 21,000 in the final quarter of last year. <clears throat> Assessments show that 3.2 million people, a, qu a quarter of the region's population, are mostly subsistence farmers, are desperately short of food in the context of continuing funding constraint, an upsurge in fighting, and rapid deterioration in the already poor road network due to the rainy season. More information from WFP. And from our colleagues at the UN Refugee Agency, they today expressed their dismay over recent additional restrictions at border crossing points in Hungary that have further reduced access for asylum seekers and refugees. For the past few weeks, UNHCR has observed that Hungarian authorities are, on average, only allowing two asylum seekers a day to enter the country through two transit zones at the border with Serbia. Since asylum seekers who attempt to cross the razor wire border fences are automatically removed, the agency says Hungary has practically closed its borders to people seeking international protection in clear breach of obligations under international uh, law. 
UNHCR also has called on the government of Hungary to withdraw a proposed bill that would deprive people fleeing war, violence, and prosecution, persecution of vital support from NGOs and civil society. And the World Health Organization today is announcing a new high-level commission comprised of heads of states and ministers, leaders in health and development and entrepreneurs. The group will propose solutions to accelerate prevention and control the leading killers on the planet, non-communicable diseases like heart and lung disease, cancer and diabetes. <clears throat> the Independent Global High-Level Commission on Non-Communicable Diseases is co-chaired by the President of Uruguay, uh, Tabare Vasquez, the President, uh, President Sirisina of Sri Lanka, President uh, Ni uh, Ninisto of Finland, uh, Veronika Sforstova, Minister of Health of Russian Federation, and Sanya Nishtar, the former Federal Minister of Pakistan. Seven in ten deaths globally every year are from non-communicable diseases, the main contributor to which are tobacco use, harmful use of alcohol, unhealthy diets, and physical inactivity. And our colleagues at the FAO, the Food and Agricultural Organization, launched today a comprehensive guide to the integrated pest management of the, f of the fall army, w army worm on maize. Uh, the fall army worm is an invasive pest that has invested, infested millions of hectares of maize across Africa, mainly crops in the hands of small farm holders. More information online. And today we will uh, thank our friends in the United Arab Emirates which has paid its dues in full for 2018, bringing us up to 51. Uh, a wrong guess uh, takes away your right to ask a question. I'm kidding. Masood. Thank you, Stefan. Stefan, on this uh, meeting between the um, Secretary General and the Israeli Prime Minister in, at the uh, Munich uh, conference, did they talk about uh, anything about Middle East becoming a nuclear-free zone and that Israel nuclear arsenal at all? I, ever I'm not aware that this issue came up. The conversation focused on the Middle East peace process. Errol. Thank you. You are really grateful. I mean, uh, gracious. I am. It's Friday. Uh, <laughs> it's Friday. <laughs> Glad that Secretary Jean didn't, didn't mention Balkan, Western Balkans in Munich Security Conference. However, today or rather tomorrow is the 10th anniversary of Kosovo independence. And since the United Nations do maintain like 400 peacekeepers or, or members of UNMIC, there I wonder whether the Secretary General would like, would like to say something on that occasion. There, there is no specific message. You know, the UN uh, is continuing to bring its support to the people of Kosovo through the mission. Uh, that we have there. Uh, it's a very important uh, mission. There are a number of political issues that still need to be uh, resolved, and we very much hope the international com community will come together to help resolve those issues. Member state of the United Nations? Well, you know, the, the issue of membership of the United Nations is one that is set, uh, is firmly in the hands of the member states of these United Nations. Mr. Lee, are you ready? Yes, I am. Excellent. Uh, I wanted to ask you, like Maldives, Scout. Maldives and Yemen. Yes, sir. Um, on, on the Maldives, there's uh, reports that the opposition uh, under Mohammed Nasheed and other parties mm -hmm. have all asked the Secretary General to get involved and, and somehow um, oversee the supposed all-party all talks. They say that they don't believe the current president will, will be as inclusive as he says, given his recent moves. Does the UN intend to actually Respond to that. Have you received the letter? And yes, what are you we're we're do? very aware of the the request. Uh, contacts will be had in the next uh, in the next few days, and I hope to have more on that for you. Okay. And on, on, on Yemen, now that you've you've you know said that, that Mr. Griffiths is the one, I'd asked you before something about vetting about his mm -hmm. uh, previous position at the Center for Humanitarian mm -hmm. Dialogue, where it, it, it's reported at least that there was a, sort of some fraud, missing money at the end of his tenure. And I wanted to know two things: one, whether this was looked at, and two, whether you can say. Given that the pen holder now also has is the nationality of the of the of the envoy, and I ask this because ha having FOIA'd the UK and been denied in full, what was the role of the pen holder in in nominating uh, Mr. Griffiths as the as the envoy? Uh, 
Mr. Griffiths will serve as the United Nations uh, staff member with all the duties uh, of independence that that, will, that brings with it. Uh, so Mr. Griffiths is not there to serve uh, the purposes of the United Kingdom or anyone else. He's th there uh, to represent the Secretary General and serve, uh, serve the United Nations. Um, the nomination, uh, the, proposed, the proposing Mr. Griffiths Security Council was made by the Secretary General. Uh, as far as the uh, the first part of your question, I think what you raised, everybody was was aware of. And as far as I know, Mr. Griffiths was never uh, never accused of any wrongdoing uh, personally. And I know he will serve the United Nations uh, well, with honor and with integrity. On this, thanks. On the issue of the of the sort of the independent the international <coughs> civil servant thing. Yesterday, you'd said you'd. I'd asked you about uh, an interview given by the head of UN Women. Mm -hmm. and you, I mean, she's pretty, it, there seems to be some kind of either slippage or, or, or has, has the Secretary General looked at that interview and said whether this is an appropriate uh, opining on current political issues in, in, in the country of the official involved? I think senior officials understand their, their obligations, and if there was an issue, the Secretary General would get in touch with them directly. Nizar. Yeah, when the Secretary General focuses more on North Korean nuclear threat, uh, does it mean that it is more of a threat than the Israeli arsenal, nuclear arsenal, in a very tense and inflammable area? Uh, what? Since it is under the carpet, does it mean it's less? First of all, uh, I have, a I have than, no. Uh, uh, the Secretary General was focusing on the situation in the DPRK and the threat of uh, nuclear conflict um, for very obvious reason, is that it is a, an area of high tension. Uh, it is an area where nuclear uh, weapons are, um, and it is a global threat to peace and, and security. Uh, as far as your, your comments about is, about Israel, I have no, uh, I have no knowledge of of what you're you're raising, so I'm not going to comment on it. The Secretary General stands firmly uh, for uh, denuclearization. It's an open secret that Israel has over even Olmert once admitted that they have over eight two hundred I, 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 nuclear I, I, I hear what warheads. you're saying, and I think I've answered your question, Monsieur. And then we'll go to the back. Is there any? meeting planned uh, between Gutierrez and uh, Abbas next week, if yes, when? Uh, the Secretary General will be present uh, during the Security Council meeting, uh, in which Mr. Abbas uh, will, uh, will attend. Uh, as far as a, a meeting, I will check. I should have checked the schedule before I, before I came in, and I will uh, let you know. We will go to your colleague from Bangladesh, who's been very patient. Thank you, Mr. Stephen. As you know, main opposition leader of Bangladesh, Begum Khaled Azia, is in prison. Millions of people demanding her release with peaceful demonstration, according to AFP and others' media report. The media reported that ruling authority puts her prison to disqualify the upcoming election. The dele delegation from the EU and diplomats from the USA and other development countries of Bangladesh already met her party leaders to know about Begum Khaled Zia's update. What action has been taken from the Secretary General to release Begum Zia as she is facing politically motivated well, we've, cases? Uh, I think, as, uh, as you know, we have uh, We've said that we're following this situation very closely. We've expressed, uh, we have expressed our our concern, and we would hope that the uh, uh, that in it, like in any country, a uh, this is our, our principal position that a, a climate uh, could be created where free and fair elections could take place. Stefan, uh, I wonder. Uh, a few days before the uh, Munich Security Con uh, Conference, there was a special report for a European Commission uh, saying that the best alternative for Balkans, which, as we all know, went through bloody uh, war some 20 plus years ago, through their integration in European Union. And since European Union is still biggest peace project in the world, I wonder what are the views of the Secretary General is that a good future for uh, Balkan countries, or there is some other alternative? Uh, we, we, you know, I, obviously, that's a decision to be taken by 
the European Union. It's a decision to be taken by those countries concerned in terms of the direction uh, they wish to take. Uh, we would support any ideas that would bring uh, peace and prosperity uh, to the people of the Balkans. But Sir. For what, what are his views on that, whether this is a uh, As I said, these idea. are decisions that need to be taken by the member states concerned and by the European Union. Masood. <coughs> Mr. Prime, on the, in the situation in Rohingya crisis, uh, they are languishing in some in Bangladesh. Is there any way that they will ever be repatriated back to uh, Myanmar? Because Myanmar, uh, they are still feel unwelcome in Myanmar. And that the UN Special Repertoire over there had said that uh, there have been so many killings of the Rohingya refugees it borders on crime against humanity. So is there any possibility of them going back at all? Well, uh, you know, the, the, the possibility is um, that the situation right now is not conducive. I think as, uh, as the High Commissioner for Refugees said recently, is not conducive to the voluntary repatriation of Rohingya refugees. Repatriation needs to be voluntary. It needs to be done uh, within uh, existing law. It needs to be done in a way that is respectful uh, to the people concerned. And people need to choose where they want to go back to. They need to be able to go back to the homes that they left. They, they, they should not go back to camps. They should need to go back to their homes, the homes that they were forced, uh, they were forced to leave. Um, so there are all sorts of conditions that the High Commissioner for Refugees feel have not uh, have not been met, uh, but the 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 underlying point is that any return needs to be uh, voluntary and should not be forced. Um, you had had some questions on the court in Kosovo. I think uh, you had the answers. Good. Okay. Great. Mr. Lee. Sure. Some questions about uh, sexual abuse and harassment and the UN system. The first is. Uh, it's a pretty high profile. The, this um, guy called Peter Newell that had worked for UNICEF, that in fact wrote UNICEF's handbook on the uh, implementation of the Convention on the Rights of the Child, has been convicted, act, not, not like the other case I was asking about, mm -hmm. actually convicted of child rape of a 12-year-old uh, boy. And so I'm wondering, given the person's role with UNICEF, which is the UN's child mm -hmm. agency, What's the UN system's response to this? I, will t I had not heard that report. I will uh, check into it. What is clear is that anyone who is accused of such horrendous crimes needs to face uh, justice. Relatedly, I wanted to ask, and, I, and I, I, I was about to yesterday, and then I decided that you know, sometimes the discretion is the better part of valor. But given the, the totally unqualified expression of, of condolence and support that the Secretary General gave to Rude Luber's passing, may he rest in peace, I went back and looked. It wasn't just an allegation. U the UN OIOS found that Mr. Rudluber is engaged in a pattern of sexual harassment. So given that the intro these days many people are saying, like, if you're going to make a statement, something has to be said about the victims. I understand that the person passed away, but I'm wondering how to read the, a statement that didn't, this was a high profile, one of the first UN sexual harassment cases. The person was relieved of their employment and OIOS found a pattern of harassment. Mm -hmm. How does that square with the, with, with the statement yesterday? Is there, do you want to amplify that in some way in terms of the actual victims or? Do you not want to? I, I think uh, a person passed away. Uh, the Secretary General's statement, I think, was what it was. It was uh, respectful to that person. Uh, separately, uh, the, the, the issues surrounding Mr. Lubber's uh, departure from UNHCR are in the public domain. Uh, they are what they are, and I think the Secretary General has been very clear in his uh, determination uh, to fight the scourge of, uh, of sexual abuse, of abuse of power in the organization. Can I, and thank, thanks. Uh, one more on this is just, I'm sure you've seen the Guardian article that in, in continued reporting on the UN AIDS mm -hmm. uh, clearing of Mr. Luris, beyond the role of, of the executive director, they've said that staff members, but many of them were said that they were virtually ordered to write letters of support for Mr. Luris, which seems to be pretty much almost the definition of, 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 of Look, a cover I, I think these, these are allegations. Uh, I, I would encourage you to speak to, uh, to UNAIDS. Uh, 
they are, you know, and they they will speak for themselves in this uh, in this case and answer what is what are really just just allegations. The 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 uh, the investigation was done. It was done under the authority of the World Health Organization's Office of Independent uh, of Investigative uh, Services. So questions regarding that should go to UNAIDS and the World Health Organization. And can you say anything more about this March meeting that that the head of UN Women came, <clears throat> said that the Secretary General was going to convene? I guess on the sidelines of an upcoming conference, an all-agency meeting about sexual harassment? Not, that... at the, not at this point. Okay. Abdel Hamid. Thank you. I'm sorry for coming late. You're always welcome. Doors, you. The door don't lock. The doors don't lock. Thank you. I, uh, there are news coming from occupied Palestine that Israel is building a major religious center right on the, near the western wall of the Al-Aqsa Mosque which is according to UNESCO is a Palestinian heritage. They're also extending the educational uh, laws to the settlement. It's one step before they annex the settlement become part of Israel. I haven't seen, I will take a look at the reports of the construction and get, uh, and get back to you. Thank you. These are uh, after seven years of uprising in Bahrain, do you have in the eighth year any statements on the human rights there? And uh, especially many of the leaders remain in jail. Uh, nothing new to what we've already said or the concern that we've raised at the specific cases, a number of people who've been imprisoned. Masoud. This Egypt's uh, government's incarceration and arrest of its opponents of the Israeli, uh, of the uh, Egyptian president, Sisi. Uh, in that new election campaign that's about to go, and he's arresting his all his uh, uh, people over there, especially from the Islamic uh, side. Uh, absolutely, does, does the United Nations has any sort of uh, conversation with the Egyptian government on this arrest and incarceration of the opponents of the president? Look, we're continuing to engage with the Egyptian authorities on this uh, issue and noting our concern with the reports regarding the limited political space in the country, including the number of recent arrests and detentions. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Stephen. Just one follow-up on Rohingya. The UN position is very clear that the Rakhine uh, state, the situation is not comfortable to return back. But just today, Myanmar foreign uh, uh, home minister visiting Bangladesh, and Bangladesh authority has handed over a list of 1,673 families of 8,032 Rohingyas to Myanmar to start the first phase of repatriation of the displaced people living in Bangladesh to their homeland in Rakhine. So what our, is your position on it? You know, we're, we're not privy to those conversations. Our position is clear, is that return of refugees need to be uh, voluntary. Yes, sir. Sure. Uh, two questions. One is, in, in, uh, in Turkey, uh, there's always, always a, uh, a lot going on, but now uh, journalists have for the first time been convicted and assigned life sentences for um, uh, a, a alleged participation in, in the uh, alleged coup. And given it's, it's a life sentence and that these are journalists, including Am Amit Altan and No, we, I, I just saw the reports before coming in. I should have something further for you on that. Okay. I wanted to ask you about the, 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 um, the display, which is now gone, that was downstairs, that I'd asked you about yesterday. You say you'd look into it. After that, I noticed that they put up a sign saying, ask the organizers, the UN is not embracing. It was basically showing automatic weapons. Okay. But what I did speak to the organizers, as the sign encouraged me to do, and as, you, as I believe Fairhine told me to do. And what they said is that the, the purpose of that, that advertising uh, exhibition was that it was all about peacekeeping, that these were th uh, items to be sold to countries for peacekeeping. So I just wanted to ask you to I think my, the my, my understanding is that uh, what was agreed upon and what was actually shown uh, were not the same things, and that's why uh, we've asked them to take it down. Abdel Hamid. I ask you before, uh, and I ask again, uh, President Mahmoud Abbas is addressing the Security Council mm -hmm. on the morning mm -hmm. of, the, uh, of Tuesday at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Is the Secretary General would be in the meeting? Yes, that was part of the show that you missed. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Have a good weekend. No, good. Thank you.